Uh, I've been asked this several times, what the hell is Elvis Presley doing in a film noir? <laughs> and is it a film noir? Well, uh, like beauty, noir is in the eye of the beholder, and, and I'm the beholder, and as my good friend and colleague Leonard Maltin said one time, uh, Alan Rohde takes the de definition of film noir and stretches it to the breaking point and beyond. So there's that. The other thing, though, is this movie is a very dark movie. This is not your typical Elvis film uh, at all. Along for the ride, a actress who played Elvis's sister, who has had a, I don't know, seven decades in show business, and it is just a joy to have her here tonight. Please welcome our special guest, Jan Shepard. How long has it been since you saw seen that, uh, did it bring back any specific memories? Well, I do have it on television. Right. Yeah, right. I do have the disc. That's awfully bright. Really? really? Yeah. I don't see the audience. Uh, well, we'll we're filming. They're here. They're here. Just uh, Are they here? The yeah, they're, they're here. They're, they love you. They love you. Um, I really can't now, see Now, now, uh, uh, Getting this part, uh, I guess if you were going to write it, you'd say I owe it all to Dolores Hart, correct? Right, I write. Dolores and I were doing a play at Paramount Studios, and uh, she said, I'm going to do this film for Hal Wallace, and I said, great. She said, there's a part there that you'd be wonderful in. Mm -hmm. And because we've been great friends since 1952, practically. and. Uh, I said, well, that's nice. Sure. I didn't think anything more you've, of you've it. You've heard that you know, before. Yeah, I've heard it before. Right. But she went up there and said, I think she would be wonderful for Elvis's mm -hmm. sister. And so I, uh, I can't take that light. OK. Do can we want to can can we we move the lights? Uh, can we move the lights? Can you bring the audience light up? Oh, the audience lights are on here. It's they just are? these lights are very this bright. This is awfully bright. Okay, well, let's. I like let's to move see this. the people. I'm sorry about that, but no, okay. I can't see okay. you. Okay, better. Much better. Yeah, we'll be filming in the dark, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. Yeah. So, thank you. so you and Mother Dolores really had a a close relationship that transcended, you know, getting you the part in King Creole. Yes, we, uh, she became a nun, as you know. Oh, yeah, Mother and, Dolores, yes. Yeah, Mother Dolores, and uh, uh, she, she just was one of the closest friends I've ever had. And still have. And still has. And still God have. bless her. Yeah, yeah, she's still going. Fifty years in the monastery. <laughs> it's yeah. a long time. <laughs> yeah. But she loves it, and she, it's 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 where she belongs. She yeah. Really does. Yeah. And she, and I became her godmother when she went into the monastery. Maria Cooper and I, mm -hmm. we, uh, Gary Cooper's daughter, uh, we both took her up to the chapel, mm -hmm. and that's when she stayed there. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I spent, I don't know how long on the phone with her, I called her uh, uh, for my Curtis book, and she said, well, I can't talk very long, and we ran down the entire battery on my cell phone, it was fully charged, I was on the phone with her for almost three hours, I know. She, she's, just, she's just phenomenal, she's, she's fantastic a wonderful, person, wonderful girl. fantastic person, but uh, uh, getting the part on King Creole. Now, did you have to do an audition for Michael Christie? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine was doing Elvis's role when, the, when they were testing me. Right. And when I walked onto the studio, there were five other girls. Okay. And I was shocked because I was young and I was, this is my early part of my career. Sure. And uh, I almost walked out. <laughs> Because I was so embarrassed, I thought I'll never get this part. Mm -hmm. Because it was Diane Brewster, Kathy O'Donnell, Karen Sharp, and now you remember all the oh, names. No, you don't forget them. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, I thought, gee, I'll, I don't have a chance because they had much more of a, um, a, a career, mm -hmm. and I had sure. mine was just beginning. Right. You know? Right. I and think you started your first thing was a, a television show in '50. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, it yeah. was. Yes, it was. It was um, 
Fireside Theater. Wow. Well, that's what it was. Yeah, that goes back yeah, to Yeah, that's years. a story in yeah. itself. <laughs> so. But you, you had all these other people, and were you like third or fourth in line to, to do this scene? I was, the la I was the last one, and Peter came up to me because I said, Peter, I'll never, I'm going home. I said, I don't have a chance. Right. And he said, Jan, they're all playing it like his girlfriend rather than his sister. And right. so I said, well, okay, I'll try, because Peter wanted me to stay. Mm -hmm. And I went home, and I got on my knees, and I prayed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. And uh, the phone rang, and they said, uh, you've got the part. Yeah. Now, what was the, what was the Michael Curtiz experience like? Uh, a lot of actors found him to be uh, abrupt, harsh, hard to understand in his kind of unique vernacular. Well, he didn't want me for the part. Really? Really, he didn't. He, he picked somebody else. Uh -huh. And Hal Wallace said, no. Good for him. He wanted me. <laughs> and so when we did that scene, you know, in the hospital where we're crying and all of that, and <laughs> Elvis and I had to keep crying all day long for that scene. <laughs> and it was actually raining outside, for real. And uh, so he said, came up to both of us afterward. He says, I like you too. He didn't want Elvis. Really? <laughs> no, oh, the really? film was bought for James Dean. Yeah, they wanted James Dean and then they and, wanted and then, Paul Newman. And Paul Newman. Right. Yeah, right, and right. they all said, you know, no, no, well, James Dean died. Right. That, that's what happened there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was, it was just a, the break of my life. Well, it changed my life. Yeah, uh, it because uh, it was such a credit. Mm -hmm. He was very hot then, and such a darling kid. Yeah, that was like, and what was the young El? And he was young. What was the yeah. young Elvis like? He was a teddy bear. <laughs> he was. You, you wanted to hug him. He was so. In fact, when I was sitting there in the audience looking at him, and I said to my husband. He's so young, you know, he looks so young. Yeah. And he was just adorable. Yeah. Never had a dime in his pocket. Mm -hmm. If he was hungry for an apple, I had to give him a dime to put in the machine, and he'd, I, you know, and he'd get an apple. Yeah. But he was, uh, he was a darling. If he saw you and you were quite a distance away and you were coming, he would start running toward you and you'd have to be like, like that because he's gonna pick you up and swing you around. <laughs> and he was, he was so playful. And he was never in this dressing room. He was always out with the, mm -hmm. the extras and playing right. and singing. And one day we were in the, uh, my dressing room and he said, uh, I said to him, I love Danny Boy, why don't you record that? Mm -hmm. And he said, that, that's not the music that they want from me. Yeah. You know, but he loved it. It was like his favorite right. song. One of the things that Mother Dolores told me is that um, pretty much the same thing that you just told me yeah. about Elvis fun loving, except when his manager, Colonel Parker, was on the set. And then she said, Elvis's eyes never left him. And Parker had such a control over him. She said, it kind of made me sick to watch that. And, and for those of you not familiar with Colonel Parker, his pedigree was coming to this country, fleeing a murder investigation in Holland, jumping ship. Then he was a, he got out of the army by feigning insanity in an asylum. He was a carnival tout. I mean, this guy was a real character. In fact, when Hal Wallace went to sign Elvis, he said uh, he had to call the colonel and he wrote in his memoir, the toughest negotiation of my career yeah. dealing yeah. with him. He made a fortune. On yeah, and he, yeah, the, the agent that got 50% of everything Elvis made. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just think he ruined Elvis's life. Yeah. And then maybe not his career. He actually did help him with his career, but yeah. not with his life. Well, you were, you were in a later Elvis picture. Which one was that? And could you see the change oh, in yes. him? I was in Paradise Hawaiian style. Right. Yeah. Right. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. <laughs> when you yeah. were a little boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I came along. I came along where the Beatles were coming in, and Elvis was in those movies like 
Fun in Alcapulco and Viva Las oh, Vegas. He did what, yeah, yeah, and all the movies were the same. He was playing Elvis. Yeah. He wasn't. He was not playing a real character as he was in this film. So when you were in the Hawaiian movie with him, did you see how he had changed? Oh, from, tremendously. Yeah. What was he well, like then? When we did King Creole, he was never in the dressing room. Right. He was always out with the extras and the, mm -hmm. and the orchestra, the band, right. and he, and fun. Just mm -hmm. a lot of fun, and uh, with uh, with Hawaiian style, I noticed that he had the Mo Memphis Mafia with him, right. which was a bunch of guys from Memphis that hung around him, and he was kind of quiet. He, of course, by that time, Dolores had been in the monastery, right. and he knew that I had gone back to see her, so he mm -hmm. inquired quite a bit about her. And but he, he would I noticed he was drinking a lot of water, and he was reading a, a book on theology. And I thought, what's going on? Is he going to become a minister? <laughs> you know, I'm really losing I didn't another know. one to religion from really, the cast of King Creole. <laughs> yeah, know, he was really yeah. into it, though. Yeah. It was it was really something. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, one day uh, Dolores called me and she said. Uh, my mother's sick and I can't leave her. Can you bring me some medicine for her? Mm -hmm. So I said, sure, I would do that. So what happened was by the time I got there and I opened the door, all the kids from Paramount were there and they said, surprise, happy birthday. Oh, and I nice. thought, oh, she did it again, Dolores. Nice. But next thing I know, there's a knock on the door and here's Elvis with a huge tiger, or not a real one, a real stuffed tiger on his shoulders and he's carrying a big box all with ribbons and everything over it. And I, and Dolores said, I'm so glad you could come. And he said, well, it's my sister's birthday. <laughs> of course oh, I'm coming. That's sweet. That's you know, sweet. and then because I had asked him for, you know, when you're in the, in the show with Elvis at that time, and they knew it, people would know it, they'd say, oh my God, get us a picture. And I kept saying to him on the studio, you know, Elvis, mm -hmm. I need some pictures of you for the, for the, the neighbors. Right. And uh, he said, uh, okay, but never gave them to me. And then when he walked in with this big box, and I said, uh, uh, went to put it down. Right. And he said, no, 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 I want you to open it. And I, so I opened it, and it was a camera with the light bar, rolls of film, and he said, take your pictures. <laughs> now, let me tell you, Colonel Parker would not have liked that because Elvis never really went to people's homes. They always had to come to him. And he told me one time and I, when I asked him about because. When we would be working, all the girls would be waiting by the, the, gate, the gate. And we'd have to send a car out that looked like it was a limo, and Elvis was in it. And yet he was in a taxi cab laying on the floor just to get out yeah. of the studio without the people. Because he said one time, he was just at a diner. They were driving somewhere, and uh, this guy, who looked like, you know, a big Hulk, came up to him and lifted him up like that and <laughs> said, I don't like you. And I'm, Elvis said, well, what's the matter? And he said, uh, my wife carries your picture around in her wall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no wonder he had the Memphis Mafia and Red West, all these karate guys around him. <laughs> but he said, you know, he yeah. was, he said, well, sir, because he always called people by their sir, or miss, yeah. or madam. Yeah. And he said, sir, he says, I, I'm sorry about that. She shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then he let him go. Right. But he said, you know, they hurt me. Yeah. He says, when I get into a mob, they, they want to grab my hair, and, but they're hitting my eye. He said, one time, they really scratched the hell out of his eye. And he says, I can't go anywhere. Yeah, they, I, I read when uh, they were doing the New Orleans location, mm -hmm. they had to go, he had to go in through the back of a different building connected with the hotel and walk across on boards to the roof to get to his hotel room.